welcome. Uh, the subject for this week will be just the generals of scene editor. I'm going to start to share my screen now and walk through a couple things for those who are working alongside. Um, Alice.org is where all of these materials, presumably you found us and found this. We will be using Alice 3 for this workshop. So if you haven't already, you can download the version here. Um, I also suggest if you're willing to use the Alice beta, it has some other fixes and things like that. We'll have a official release, hopefully by the end of spring, that will incorporate a bunch of other fixes that are just generally for Alice 3. We are gonna be using the free resources on our website for this. So if you go to Alice Resources, Alice 3, Lessons, it will bring you to this page. We're gonna start on this one right here, building a scene. Um, if you go to the building the scene page, you will see a bunch of materials here. You can download them if you would like, or you can use them as Google Docs. Um, the Google Docs, you are more than welcome to make your own copies and edit as you like. Obviously, they are just shared as view only so that our copies maintain stability, but that doesn't mean that you can't go in and edit them yourself. So for all of these, um, for those of you who may go on to teach these, uh, the materials that we provide are a facilitation guide. For this one, you will see sort of the things that we're hoping to accomplish today or just understanding the basic components of an Alice scene the overview of how the scene editor works, um, what an object is in Alice, how to add them, manipulate them, and things like that, how our camera works for Alice. You'll see in this facilitation guide, there's a bunch of vocabulary that may be helpful to review with a class if you're doing it, or if you're just taking this for your own self, you are a student or user, um, you can get in there and look at those. Uh, we have a suggested process. So for teachers out there, um, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. You can do this by just presenting through the whole presentation and then moving on to the exercise and project. You can step out while you're doing the presentation to do some demos of what these things actually look like in Alice. Um, so we outlined a bunch of those with talking points that go with the slides um, to help you through that. Uh, at the end, we have a couple different things for, well, we also have a walkthrough of the exercise and project and then just some reflection questions and things like that. So those are all there for you. Uh, we also have assessment materials. Uh, we're adding more to these. If you're a teacher and you want to, these include things like, in this case, a um, terms and vocabulary quiz, some questions that you could ask that are longer form, a quick thing for just validating that they understand the components of the editor. And then we have the presentation materials. The next part of any of our, our, our lessons are, at the bottom of any of the lessons, if you point yourself or you're coming to this, students, things like that, are all of the related how-tos we've created that are embedded into the lessons. So you can review any of these. They're sort of there as very simple examples of you know how to rotate an object, things like that. Including the facilitation guide is also a pop-out to an exercise in projects. Um, for most of our lessons, we'll have a tutorial that, that we're gonna work through together today. Um, this can also be done self-guided where you just hand it out and let them go. You can, we have guided um, options for if you want to work a little bit, um, work alongside your students or kids, um, check in with them and then move on. So there's a bunch of different ways to do that. Um, depending on what your situation is now, sometimes it's hard to have Alice running and looking at these. If we were running this workshop in real time in person, I'll generally print these out so that you can follow along next to your computer and have full screen of Alice. Um, this will be an interesting one of trying to juggle that. Um, I will sort of demo them as I go. And so if you can work through my voice, you can look at Alice um, and I will try to guide you as best I can and check back in as well. So that is what we are gonna be covering today. And those are where all the re resources live on our website. So hopefully you have Alice installed. If not, follow along and you can do these things later on your own. Um, feel free to jump to all of those. And then I am going to dive into giving, building a scene in Alice presentation. I might step out to show things in Alice as we go. And I will go full screen. All right, so building a scene in Alice. 
one of the big things is, is Alice is a virtual world. So what does that mean? That means that we are a 3D virtual environment. Um, so if we're talking about two dimensions, that's sort of, you can see the image of a tea party, things on a flat plane, they may depict the space, but are not constructed in the space. A 3D world is a representation of the place, the full environment, the objects in that place. And the big difference is that those objects then have height, width, and depth. The core components of the of an Alice scene, um, you have the sky color, which is sort of the fog setting. So your atmosphere, you have a ground surface. So in this one, you see the grass. So the ground can have different textures that then sort of put you in different environments. Um, we will get to the part where you can then add a bunch of objects to that scene. So we have characters, props, scenery, a bunch of things to help you make rich 3D worlds. And then we have the camera, which is the, the lens that we're looking into the scene. So then the Alice scene editor, the Alice scene editor comes with scene templates. Um, when you first load up Alice, uh, you will see something that looks like this. These are sort of those, the sky color, the fog settings, and then obviously the ground allows you a bunch of variation in sort of the location of the scene. So you can see all of these different ones. We also have some starter worlds. Um, these are sort of pre-populated, different levels of depth, depending on sort of the, your computer, you can choose more minimal ones if uh, memory becomes an issue. It is important to know that these are here. In many cases, this can help you get up and running and start learning to do things in Alice. As a teacher, it's also good to know that these are here just in case your student does the exercise and it just happens to look very similar to one of these. Um, if we go back to the blank slates, you can choose one of these, click OK, and it will bring you into the Alice interface itself. When you first land, you land on the code programming side of Alice. To get to the scene editor, you click on this setup scene on the bottom right. So if you're sort of following along and doing this in Alice while we do the lesson, you would click on this setup scene button and this brings you to what we call in Alice the scene editor. So scene templates, um, again, sort of showed you the where to get to it. This is gonna be a button that you use a lot when you're toggling back and forth between the code editor and the scene editor. So the scene editor has sort of three major components. One is the camera view, which is where and how you see the scene. We have a properties panel, which is this right side, which gives you information about whichever object you have selected. So in this case, it's showing information about the camera. And then we have the gallery on the bottom and we'll talk a little bit more about what's in the gallery, but that's where you find all the objects that you can add to the scene to start to build your world. So a Alice object is a virtual representation. When we get into perusing the gallery, you're gonna see things, people, animals, vehicles, those types of things for making your environment more lush. We have trees, furniture, um, rooms, things like that to build out the world. As you can see, the arrow is sort of showing you the dimensions, so it has both height, width, and depth. One of the major components of Alice is the concept of move, turn, and roll. So since we are 3D, an object can move in six directions. They can go up, they can go down, left, right, forward, backwards, and they can turn in two directions. So you can turn, you know, if I'm standing right and left, I can also turn forward and backwards, sort of leaning forward and backwards and then I can roll, so to my side and uh, around my pivot point. Um, something that you could do right now if you wanted to, just to stretch, is if you stand up and you put your arm forward and your arm out to your left, this sort of gives you that orientation of an object. Most of our animations are gonna be from the perspective of the object that you're moving, so if you're ever forgetting what you're doing, stand up, do this. If you wanted to go forward, it's going out from your hand, turning left, um, those are good ways to just remember your orientation. Those turns rolls are going to be around a pivot point. So when we talk about a pivot point, it is just you could choose anywhere in that object where you would, when you turn or roll, it's going to roll around. In Alice, we try to put them in logical places for the ways that you want to animate them. So in this case, we're looking at a person, um, the queen, and so the pivot point is at the feet. And this is done sort of, if you think about if you are going to roll forward or backwards or to the right or left, you generally sort of lean around your feet where you're touching the ground. 
So they will be different for different objects. In the case of say a fish, a fish is gonna pivot around its sort of center of mass because that's how a fish would move. A bird might be slightly different. Some of our prop objects might also have different pivot points. Um, but that's what we talk about in terms of a pivot point and where those turn moves and rolls are gonna move around. In Alice, um, you are going to be doing joint-based animation. So if you look at the picture on the left and you see the queen, this is sort of the idea that objects usually have internal joints that we would refer to as sort of a skeleton. And that's how you would do any manipulation of that model. Um, joints have different orientations than the whole object. So again, going back to that forward, things like that. Um, when you start moving these around, you'll see that it gets a little complicated. We have some how-to videos that talk about biped joint orientation and things like that, but a lot of it is gonna be trial and error. So one of the things that I like to do when you are introducing this is ask the question, you know, if you raise your hand, what happens with your body? And so some might say that the hand moved, others might say that you know, the arm moved, What's really happening is that your shoulder joint is turning, your elbow is turning, and then your hand is turning. Um, let me see if I can just jump back to stop sharing so I can show what I'm talking about. Um, try to make me look a little bigger. So this is the idea that if you, if you move your hands, um, so if I move my hand to here, it's not that the hand is moving, it is that when I did that, the shoulder turns, the elbow turns, the wrist turns, and so when we talk about manipulating objects in Alice, that's really what we're talking about is joint animation. All right. The gallery. So the gallery has a whole bunch of 3D models. Um, for those of you that are interested in learning about sort of programming, um, these are in Alice World classes. So they are done by class hierarchy. Um, that just means that they share components um, from sort of a top level down through the child classes. So you can see that our gallery is broken up by bipeds and flyers and props and quadrupeds, swimmers. And you can see in the little image that we have highlighted that joint um, skeleton that I just talked about. That's because that is the most important shared feature, that all of the bipeds sort of have that same joint structure in them, um, which allows you to share code that you write on a biped. Um, if that goes down, you see a biped class. We then have a whole bunch of others that is, you know, the differentiation of a, an adult, an alien, a yeti, uh, a standing wolf, a bunny, and things like that. And so when we start going down, it gives more information about that unique component of how it's constructed, which is really just sort of around how it looks, potentially the size, and then some of them might have unique things that they can do. So that is sort of an Alice class is defined by construction of the objects in Alice and what they can do. So what joints are in there, which informs sort of some of their animations. This is what that class hierarchy looks like. So in the terms of the swimmer class, they all share that base um, skeleton. As you go down, it slips, switches between fish and mammals because they have slightly different skeletons. And then finally, you come to the lowest level, um, which is the individual class, which is sort of, you know, does it look like a blue tang or does it look like a clownfish? This is also just the way you will navigate the gallery in terms of finding the things that you would want to add to your scene. So then let's talk about adding an object to the scene. There's two ways to do it. Um, you can either drag them into the scene or you can double click to add them to the scene. If you drag it in, you'll see what we call a bounding box, which gives you an idea of you know, the space around the object and how big it will be. I'm gonna jump out and show this one. So let's say I go to biped and then I take Alice. I can drag her into the scene. Um, we have a couple of different versions of Alice. We'll go with the one that has got the CMU Tartan on it. Um, it is then going to ask me about um, the naming conventions, I'll come back to that in a second. When I add it to the team, there she is. The other option is to double click. Again, it will ask me about naming it. This one will put it at the sort of center of the universe, so X, Y, Z, zero, zero, zero. Those are the two ways that you can add to Alice. Naming, you saw the bobs pop up. 
Um, since what we're actually doing is writing the code underneath and building your program, um, we will have to follow some programming conventions when you name an object, which means that we can't do spaces, we can't do special characters because they might have um, impacts in terms of coding. So in this case, the queen of hearts is spelled out as one word. One of the things we talk about is the term camel casing, which means that if you string multiple together, uh, do an uppercase for each new word. So you can see that the lowercase q, uppercase o, uppercase h makes it a little bit more legible. Obviously you wanna name it something so that you remember um, what the object is supposed to be in the scene. Um, long story short, if you get an error, check to make sure you didn't use special characters or spaces when you're naming objects and bringing them into the scene. Once you add an object to the scene, there she is. There's a couple of different things that we can point out to you. Um, first, in the top left, there's going to be a object tree. So this is one way to select the objects that you want to then manipulate. The other is just to click on them in this scene. So here we have the queen, if I click on her. Um, there is also this list over here. You see the little arrow drop down. That is another way to select from the objects that you've added to the scene. So you then can manipulate. Um, you'll see these donuts appearing in the scene. These are the sort of handles for manipulating. You can click and drag the object around the scene. You can use the donate donut to, to rotate her. Um, and then in the properties panel, you'll see information like what paint color, how this, the opacity of, um, position X, Y, Z in space, scale and things like that. So information related to the object that you have selected. So how do I then position an object in the scene? There's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, you can just move the object around using the mouse. So in this case, there is the click and drag and all those things at the top right of the properties panel. We have a couple of different things that you can set for how that's going to work. The default is that I can click and drag the queen around in the space. You can use the shift key to move up and down. Uh, the next one is rotation, which will bring you up these different uh, donuts, each one doing a move, turn, or roll. So if you click on those and drag them around, uh, you can also do translation, which will then put these arrows that allow you to move up, down, and left and right. And the last one is scale. I will do a quick demo of that in Alice. So here is the default. I can click and drag Alice around the scene. The donut will let me rotate her around the base. If I change the to rotation, you see that now we have donuts. So I can do this type of manipulation. If I select move, you'll see that you now have the arrows. And then the last one is resize, which gives me one, which just allows me to scale. So those are the basics of manipulating. So some of the things we can point out there is that once you start adding a lot of objects to the scene, sometimes it becomes hard to tweak them to exactly where you want by clicking and dragging and using those. You can type in X, Y, Z's. Um, this is another way that if you wanted to do some pre-planning and do sort of a graph paper layout of your scene, you could add objects and then just manipulate these directly. Positioning with one shots, this is super helpful because we have some things in here that you can't do just by clicking and dragging. Right underneath the object in the properties panel, there's this little one shot. So if you drag that down to procedures, you'll see things like the move turns and rolls, which allows you to do all the things we just talked about. You also have things like move to, move and orient to, turn to face, orient to upright. So a bunch of things um, that are uniquely done through sort of these snippets um, that are very helpful for setting up a scene. You can also then model the joints that we talked about earlier to get to those. When you select any object, there'll be a little carrot next to it here if it has internal joints. So some things won't and some things will. If you click on that, you'll start to see things. So in the biped, you'll see things like neck, head, mouth, eyes, things like that. So if this is Alice, Remember that if you set these, that it's going to stay there. So if it's not doing what you're expecting, sometimes you want to select back to the one that you wanted. I could do something like typing in an X that will move Alice by the X, Y, Z. If I wanted to grow, I can do that here. Um, 
If I want to use a one shot, it goes into here to procedures. So I could do something like turn to phrase Alice two. She will now turn and look at the other Alice. So that is very helpful. It is also sometimes becomes hard to select objects when you have lots of objects and then be able to access them. So these can be very helpful. Like here's the choosing other objects. Uh, the last example then is I'll go back to Alice one using this object drop down. If I do that and I see Alice, I could go into this and grab her right shoulder. Now I can see rotation ones on just that joint so I can move her arm. You can also use one shots on a joint. So I could do turn forward 0.125 and you'll see that moves the shoulder. So these are all the different ways to manipulate an object in the scene editor. The Alice camera. The Alice camera overview. In the bottom of that, you'll see a bunch of arrows. You can drag those around to move the camera. We like to talk about the fact that sort of Alice as a world, if you think about it in terms of a movie or something like that, is that you have one camera person. Fortunately, that camera person has superpowers and can move around in all of these ways. So I could go a little more in depth in this. It's just as easy for you to go in and start playing around, but this will move on sort of the flat plane vertical. This will move you in and out. This will turn you and this will pivot you in and uh, forward and backwards. A very important part of Alice is the use of camera markers. So like I was starting to say, we have one camera person and if you want to sort of direct them as you create a, a movie or do something else, it is really helpful to give them directions. So think about it in terms of the theater. And so you would do stage directions. And many times you might put a little piece of tape on the ground so that when you tell that person to move to their next location, it is easy to communicate it and do it quickly. So we have something in Alice called a camera marker. A camera marker is essentially that, where I'm just putting a piece of tape on the ground, naming it so that when I want to use it, um, as you start moving the camera around, a lot of times when you're doing scene setup, you're going to want to move the camera to get a different angle to make sure you're setting it up the way you want. You're gonna to want to then put the camera back in that starting position for when you wanna start running your program or have the animations happen and things like that. So we highly suggest at the beginning of any project that the first things you do is create a starting position camera marker so that if you move the camera, you can always come back to that. We have other options for viewing the scene from the top left and side, but that will not be your active camera person. This looks like this. So top view, side view, front view, um, and then sort of layout scene. This is just a good way to check, you know, in this image, it looks like she is standing next to the couch. But if you look at the side view, you can tell that she is actually standing far in front of it. These are things that you might want to start to manipulate Remember to go back to your starting camera view if you wanna see what's gonna be used in your animation. Um, I am gonna jump out and demo this. Obviously it is helpful if you can try these things as we go. I will check in with everybody at the end of this presentation and we can sort of work through any questions that people have. In the properties panel you see here, um, if I have any object selected, it doesn't matter there will always be object markers and camera markers at the bottom. If you're in a smaller screen setting, you've shrunk Alice, um, you may need to scroll down in this pane to get it. Open up camera markers. I can add a camera marker, again, using the camel casing and name it something that is helpful to you. We'll call this one starting camera. Create that one and you'll see that it's populated in the list. Now, if I wanted to move my camera around the scene because I wanted to check on the location of something or just to place an object, I can do so. And you'll see that the camera marker actually exists in the world as something that you can see. There's then two buttons for the camera markers. So the camera markers, the one that has the black camera moving towards the color-coded camera marker will move my camera to that marker. Um, if I go back out and I do something like this and I click the right one, I have now actually moved my camera marker to where that is. It's good for adjusting them and manipulating them. But remember that if you did something where you lost yourself outside of the world and can't find your scene, if I click the right one, I'm just making things worse. If I click the left one, it will bring me back to where I was. 
So that is just camera markers. We're gonna come back to them later in future lessons of Alice for programming them and using them for other things. It is just a very helpful thing and we definitely recommend that you do it at the beginning of a project so that if you do something where you lose yourself. Um, you can also use undo's, command Z. Um, hiding under this window for me is also undo and redo. This allows you to step through things um, it does have a long history, but if you close a world and you come back, it will be broken. Um, another tip and trick would be, if I get lost, you can also do one shots with the camera. So if I select the camera and one shots, we have a really good one for helping you get back to wherever you built your scene that is moving oriented to a good vantage point of. This one will allow me to select an object that I know where it is, such as Alice, it will bring me back and then I'm sort of at least found to start manipulating again. I'm gonna bring us back down to here. All right, tips and tricks. Save often. Um, Alice does create incremental backgrounds, backups, but only after you have saved the first time. So all of our projects will generally call out, start your project, save your world, create a starting camera marker, and then start to do things. Um, it is also good to just do incremental saves in case you were to break your world and want to go back. The undo redo is at the top of the procedures. You can also do it using command Z and command Y to redo. Um, like I showed you, sometimes you'll forget which handle style you have and it'll seem like Alice is behaving weirdly, but actually it's just you forgot which handle style you chose. Uh, we do have the option for holding down a shift key to drag vertically and a control window option for dragging mouse to turn the object. So I guess what I'm talking about there is that if this is Alice and we are on the default, when I drag her around, she will stay on the ground plane. If I hold down shift, she will move up and down. So that can be very helpful. Um, if I am on move, oh, and I hit option, she will rotate. So you can play around with some of those hot keys to make it faster to jump between modes, but all of those things would be achievable by using those buttons as well. When we get into playing around with the gallery, another great section is this section of shapes. So two of the big ones to point out here that are great when building Alice Worlds is one, 3D text. The other is this thing, billboard. So billboard allows you to bring images into the world. So a lot of times this is a great option for creating um, title screens, directions for games. If you wanted to put a background of your city skyline or something like that, you can bring in a billboard and attach an image to it. For all of you teachers out there, just know that this is a way that outside content can come into worlds and all of the fun that is involved in that. Um, so this is another section where you can create um, interest. All right, so I'm pretty sure that sums up the scene editor then. I will take a pause, unmute all if I can do it, and see if anybody has any questions thus far based on what I presented just now. How's everybody doing? Is We're that doing a pretty fine. good descriptor of? Hi. Uh, yes. Um, I, okay. Uh, to get the um, the dots uh, of the joints, when when you go into the um, gallery, and we go to all classes, uh, for instance, take the flyer classes, it shows um, in the classes. It shows the dots and the joints. How do I get to that spot? How do you get to selecting them? Yeah, you showed it when you uh, did the queen originally. You showed all of the joints, the dots. Oh, I mean, that was essentially just drawn on top. Let me go back and I can show you what I think you are asking. So if we're in Alice, uh, we start at the all classes, so here's the flyer class. So on this icon, you can essentially see the joints. Correct. Um, if I go in here, now we're talking about sort of the actual visual. Uh, if I bring the falcon into the scene, 
Um, now we have our Falcon. I will move everybody over here for a second. Um, dragging down here, looking at the Falcon, these are the ones that are included in the Falcon. Um, that is the best option I have for you finding them. Oh, no, I we can are find creating that. how to's that sort of tell you all of them and the orientations of the joints. We've done it for the biped. We have not done it for all of the classes. But really, it comes down to experimentation. I mean, you can look at that little icon, but it's more about exploring what's in there um, and seeing which ones that you want to manipulate. Um, a hack for as you get further into this, there is a way to view the flyer class in code. That will also bring you back to another sort of graphical image of this. But mm -hmm. that is not something that we have sort of explicitly created as a resource. Um, I will show you that back on Alice 3, there is resources. How to's. In the animation section is something we're having sort of some grad students work on. You will see that we did one of these for the bipeds. So if you are trying to manipulate joints of a biped or animate walk cycles and things like that, we have a couple of sort of how to's here because it can be sometimes challenging and it will call out all the different joints. Um, if you look at the document that comes with that, I will go back and try again. All right, this time it loaded. We have a, a very in-depth breakdown of the joints and the joint hierarchy, and then something that sort of shows the neck joint, where it is, how it's oriented, the common ways that you want to turn and roll it and things like that. So the goal is to create one of these for each of the sort of higher level classes that we think would be helpful for kids that are struggling with it. But I will again say that, I mean, a lot of that is part of the joy of Alice is exploring those things um, and figuring out what can be done just by, I mean, for a biped, they're fairly obvious, they sort of neck, left, shoulder, those types of things. In the bird, it's gonna be the same thing, sort of neck, head, wing, those types of things. All right, um, earlier in the presentation, you showed the queen with all the dots really early in the presentation. Yes, I mean, I guess that was a graphic that we, created oh, okay so i mean i, I can no no problem jump back if you were talking about this screen i mean that was more for a description of these aren't actually accurate of all of the joints okay um, it was in the original so. when you brought it up it was the original queen yeah i apologize don't, I don't worry know. i'll look it up in the, uh, in the notes <laughs> later Sounds good. The next part that we are going to go to, and I'm not sure. Well, why. I think you have Olivia and April muted. Yeah, everybody can unmute themselves if they would like to to ask questions. I muted it because it's very loud at my house. <laughs> Appreciate that. There are a lot um, of kids in the other room, and it's very loud. Well, there's yeah. not a lot. I don't know if you have heard the banging and crashing in my background, but <laughs> totally understand. I think that's just part of our current world. Yes. <laughs> All right. You can play mommy's phone, but it's dead. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, it's it. not letting me jump. Oh, no. Why are you? Well, pick what you want then. All right, go ahead. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is that was I'm the one internal internal joints. The that screen was... you had before. Yeah, this is what I was showing you. This is just drawn on top of it. Okay. So, um, how much time? I would say have? that how to is more what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. If you want to get details, but again, I think just uh, exploring those on your own and learning what's in there and playing around with them. It seems like there's a lot of joints to begin with. Um, but once you start doing some animations, you might find that there's actually things that you wish you had that we haven't implemented. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is going back to the lesson, uh, the exercise and project at the bottom, the tutorial. We are going to walk through this one. So if you click on that link, you'll end up on this page. 
if you wanted to, and I apologize for future lessons, I will put the link up ahead of time so that if you wanted to download this and print it out or have it in another window, otherwise I would say just go ahead and open up this tutorial exercise. This is what it looks like. Um, I am going to now walk us through all of that. I'm gonna go slowly. I'll try to stop after each segment sort of as if um, we're doing sort of the guided exercises where we'll do some of this, add some objects, position objects. So I'm gonna start from the beginning. So file new. The directions essentially have us building this in the Wonderland scene. So it's actually the one that I chose before. So Wonderland, um, I select on this. Hit OK. It is going to bring us to the code editor side of Alice again. So remembering that to jump back and forth is the setup scene. And then once we're in the seed to get back to the code is the bottom right of this one. So toggling back and forth. So follow along to get to the Wonderland scene in the scene editor. And so here we are ready to go. Like we said, uh, generally, you want to do a starting camera marker, so I'm going to do that now. It defaults to being on the camera because we don't have any other objects. I'm going to add a camera marker into starting camera. So again, bottom of the um, this this window over here. Again, you may have to scale or scroll if you've made a different size. Following this camel casing, and now I have a st starting camera marker. If you are going to want to, um, I guess, potentially there is always the chance that uh, Alice will crash. I don't want you to lose your work. So go up and click File and Save at this point and name it um, Alice Tutorial if you would like or whatever you want to. That will start backups in case something on your computer seizes up or we fail you and Alice crashes. So if you all want to go ahead and do that now. We are gonna start adding objects. Um, for this first one, we're gonna add the T table. Um, you can search the props. The props have a bunch of things in there. Uh, I could look for it this way. You can search props also by um, the theme. So browse gallery by theme is another option. Browse gallery by group search gallery, my classes, things like that. So in this case, we are doing the Wonderland. One option would be to come in here and go to the Wonderland. You'll see that we have most of our Wonderland items here. Here is the tea table if you go and browse gallery by theme Wonderland. Um, another option, if in any of these directions or future ones, you just can't seem to find it, we do have a search option. So if I put in T, and you'll see all the tea cups, and then you'll also see the tea table. For this one, let's drag it in so you can see the bounding box. So when you bring it in, drag it around the scene, and you'll see sort of the ghosted version of where it will be. I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. Tea table seems like a pretty good name for it. I'm just going to leave it at that. Now you can see that we have the tea table in the scene. Oh, I did that wrong based on the tutorial. So I am going to Command Z undo. The first one we want to do is double click it. This will then add it at zero, zero, zero in the world, which will be helpful for X, Y, Z. So our T table is sitting in the middle of the world. I'm going back to browsing gallery by theme Wonderland. The next thing we're going to do is add Alice to the scene. So in this case, I'm gonna drag Alice into the scene. We'll put her over here for now. Um, we'll do the Wonderland Alice. Yeah, Alice seems like a pretty good name for Alice. So there she is. Um, last person we we're going to want to add is Cheshire Cat. So we'll put the Cheshire Cat over here for now. You'll see that we have one version that is just the um, important grin, and then we have one that is the full cat. So there is our cat. Um, next one is we want you to search the gallery to find this one, just to make sure you can do this. So we are going to add the chair. You can choose sort of any chair you like. I'm gonna go with the colonial blue. So there's our chair. Next, we're gonna get up to positioning objects, but I'll take a quick pause and just check in. Does anybody have any challenges of getting this far? Questions about things that we just did? 
I know this sounds silly, but I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, I put the, um, the tea table in, actually I did two, but it didn't show. Did you drag it or did you double click it? Uh, I think I dragged it. I should have double clicked it. Well, double clicking will put it in a zero, zero, zero. I mean, after you drag, did you get the pop-up? Um, so here, to okay. delete an object, another tip is you can right click on it to delete. Delete. Uh, you can also do it over here. So delete. if it was over there, you could do it that way. Let me go back go to tea table. Back to the tea right. table. Um, drag it in again, you should see something like what you see now on my screen where you see the bounding box. So when I let go, that means that's where that's going to be. Okay, I'm in, I'm in you, sofa. I don't know why. Okay, let's go to tea table. Um, I keep telling uh, my kids, so you want me just to drag it in? You can double click it in. I mean, I guess the reason that maybe it's not sitting in front of you is if you have moved the camera so that you're no longer looking at the center of the world. I don't know if you followed can along. You and see, made a can you see camera. my screen? I, I, I'm not going to jump back. I've only got about nine more minutes. Okay, never mind. Never mind. So uh, we're going to have a QA session right after this. So I guess if you want, we can walk through some more of this after that. I just kind of want to keep going through this keep one. Go keep going. And we'll circle back. All right. So then we come to the positioning object steps. Um, so first we want to add Alice to the end of the table using the mouse. So I can click and drag her here. I can remembering to go back to the default, use this to turn her towards the table. So we've got Alice positioned at one end of the table. Um, placing the chair at the other end of the table, we're going to move our Cheshire cat out of the way. So we'll put the chair over here. Again, I'm just clicking and dragging it on default and then using the default donut to rotate it towards it. Again, just using the mouse for this one. Um, other option is to use the XYZ for the chair. So let's nudge the chair by just changing a couple of these numbers. You can see it's at minus two if I do that. It's sort of pushed in. We'll go to minus 2.5 to bring it out from the table a little bit. So there you go. Um, the next one is to place the Cheshire Cat above the table as if it's floating in the air. So I'm going to go ahead and drag Cheshire Cat around, put it behind the table. Again, using the hot key shift, I can move up into the air. So if I do that, now the Cheshire Cat is floating above the table. Um, drag the cat back towards the table. From this angle, it's obviously a little hard to tell because it could just be the cat hanging out way in the background. Um, but that is the basic gist of that. Again, in the interest of time, I'm going to move on, but we can pick up questions later. Uh, I will just continue through the exercise and project, but this is a good place to stop. If you're working with others and just make sure everybody's on the same page, they were successfully able to pull that off. So then orienting the objects, Moving to the next one using the camera controls. Um, I'm going to use these arrows, bring the camera a little bit closer in, give it a light, slight twist on this. So just pick something that makes it a little easier. Because of that, I feel like the Cheshire Cat should be over here a little bit more. Um, I can then optionally, so that I don't lose this position, create another camera marker that's um, up close, or I could have moved the existing camera marker to this spot if this is what I wanted to use. So next we will move on to the aligning objects. Um, from the tea set of Wonderland, we are going to pick the teapot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and search the gallery to get to it. So I still had that search done. Here's our teapot. Um, if I just drag and drop it in, you know, it's under the table. So my options are 
to use shift to bring it up to the table. I could also adjust the Y to move it up. It is now in the sort of middle of the table. So that one is done. Next up, we need a saucer. So continuing through, here are some saucers, dragging a saucer in. I'm gonna use the same shift method to bring it up towards the table, drag it back, put that here. I'm gonna use the move to move this one, realizing that I'm at no longer in the same plane as it. Now I can make sure I'm there. So then I wanna add a teacup. So we'll grab, well, we can use the matching teacup. I will add the teacup here. This is a great place to use a one shot. So trying to align this to the saucer by visual and using camera views is a little bit of a challenge. I can use the one shot procedure to move to. So teacup, move to, and here is my saucer. If I do that, there you go, it snaps right to it. Some of them might have different pivot points, so it might not align as cleanly as that. Um, but there you go with that one. Um, I could then continue on and add a saucer in a teacup for Alice and Cheshire Cat and things like that. This is a good time if you haven't already to save just to make sure that you're saving as you make progress. Um, our next goal is going to be to take the Mad Hatter and put the Mad Hatter in this chair. This is going to get into some of those joint animations. Um, I'm going to go back to browsing gallery by theme. We are in Wonderland. Here is the Mad Hatter. Drag the Mad Hatter into the scene. Um, the goal here is that we want the Mad Hatter to sit in the chair. So one thing I can do first is I can use another one shot to move and orient the Mad Hatter to the chair. Sort of inside the chair, I'm gonna use the arrow to move him forward a little bit. Um, we want to get the legs up because right now he's not so much sitting in the chair as standing in the chair. So again, sort of the reminder of the little carrot next to the object allows me to get to the joints. Sorry. If I do that and I grab the left, well, we're gonna have to go to other joints. So if you look at this one here is a lot. Um, some are then in the other joints, but actually I just found it. Here's the left hip. I can either use this, so the rotation joint will now allow me to turn the hip. So for the left leg, I'm gonna use that to position it sort of in front. I am then going to switch and grab the right hip. And for this one, I'm going to use a one shot. So same thing, I can turn. I'm gonna cheat because I already know this. It's gonna be backwards about a quarter turn. So that brings that leg up. Um, as you experiment with this, you're gonna end up doing things where people's joints go in different directions and lots of chaos ensues. Uh, enjoy that. Again, I sort of showed you earlier where there's some how-tos to point out the exact orientations of hips and things like that. But now you can see that if we go back to the Mad Hatter, whoop, I put it back on move to tweak the height of him. Oh, can't see the arrow because it's above the seam. So I'll go to default and use the shift key. And we'll place him in the chair. Close. Uh, so now we have manipulated the subjoints of the Mad Hatter to get him sitting in that chair. That is pretty much it. I mean, that is, I didn't do a great job of matching this scene entirely. Some of that is just camera markers and things like that, adding more to the scene. But if you, as you see, it's sort of, if you follow along that tutorial, it'll sort of force you to give a try of the one shots using all the different handle styles, play around with these types of things. The one thing I didn't use was to use the top view um, in order to check in on my placement. Um, so, an adjustment here would be that obviously my Cheshire cat is hanging out way back. Alice is a little bit off the end of the table. The Mad Hatter is as well and could use a little bit of a rotation. 
bring our chair back around. So this is an example of using the top view to make sure that everybody is actually at the table because it looked fine from the other view, come back to this view, and then maybe we have to do a little bit more of adjustments. Um, that is the basics of what is done in this tutorial. The hope there is that, that you'll have more confidence then have created a cool little scene and then we'll go off and explore the gallery and make whatever you want. Um, play around with those definitely before we do our next workshop next week. Play around with making some cool scenes. Some things that I love to point out is if I go back to the gallery and I go to all themes um, or by class and go all classes. In the bipeds, we do have these first couple, which are actually the Sims resources. So we've incorporated the Sims. You can do some people building, um, play around with things like skin. You can switch to child and teen, um, tops, bottoms, hats, faces, all those types of things. Um, adding in the child person, you'll get a huge long string. Why it is good to use one shots and other ways of selecting objects. I think Alice is about to crash on me because I've been running it too long. We do use a lot of memory. Um, if you get to a point like you're like I am seeing now where everything is just moving epically slow and it's hard to select things. A good thing to do every once in a while is to just save your world, quit Alice and relaunch it. This will um, free up a bunch of things. Um, which will help you with performance. And sometimes you get to a place where it's hard to click and things like that. Um, so with that, I am gonna jump back out of the sharing, see if there are any last questions to address here. And then I might duck out and ask anybody who wants to go through everything we just went through, um, ask more questions, show what you've made and get a little help on it and things like that, to just jump us into the other meeting, um, I guess, last share of screen would be, there was the blog post, there is also um, the workshops and events. I'm changing the website now so that it will show the days when we're on it. Um, there is a weekly question and answer center session that has another Zoom ID just so I can start to process the video output of this video. Um, so I'm going to shut us down here and move us there. If you want to follow me there, uh, I am happy to answer questions, look at the worlds you built, try to answer any uh, issues that came up. So thank you all for joining us. Um, appreciate it. And then again, this video will go um, up on our website soon. Uh, so you can definitely share it out with anybody, students that would want to watch it, other teachers. Um, and prep for next week. If you want to join us next week for the next workshop, uh, make sure you have Alice downloaded. I showed you where the lessons are that we're going to be going through. We are going to do programming in Alice. So if you wanted to look at the tutorial link to that and print out the materials ahead of time. Um, so yeah, again, thank you so much and meet me in the next meeting if you would like to ask some questions.